is your relationship with time? Are you wired and tired, stressed and overwhelmed, busy and going nowhere, or just want to scale your business? Welcome to Take Back Time with your host, Penny Zenker. Penny focuses on books, strategies, tools, and tips to help you work smarter and approach your time more strategically. As a result, you can have more energy, focus, and get more done in less time. Be more efficient and effective. Get ready to take back time. Hello, and welcome to Take Back Time. My name is Penny Zanker, and I'm your host. And I'm always geeking out when I'm talking to people about how we can be more efficient and effective in the things that we do, especially now where I feel like people are even more stretched emotionally and also just seem to have more on their plate, partially because of that energetic drain that's going on, but also because maybe there's fewer resources available to them. Maybe there's a lot of context switching going on, but in none case, we want to get ourselves, we want to step back in this episode and think about how we can really work smarter, how we can leverage ourselves so we can focus on what's most important and eliminate those things that are less important. So I'm excited today to have Kadira Muhammad with us. She is a systems implementation engineer, right? Fellow geek, founder of succeedingwithsystems.com. And she went from breaking into the entrepreneurial world at 18 with a goal of retiring her parents, worthy goal there, to falling in love with systems. And she now teaches solopreneurs and startups how to establish lifestyle freedom using systems, automation, and technology. So hello, geek. Dear, welcome. Thank you, Penny. Thank you to be here with the geek squad a little bit. I'm That's happy right. to be here. It's the geek squad. So tell me how you fell in love. Tell me about the love affair that you had with technology and automation. Oh, absolutely. It, it all started when I actually started my digital marketing consultancy agency back in 2019. I was about to graduate college. It was like six months before. I'm applying to a bunch of different places. Nobody's calling me back. And I'm like, well, you know what? I have the time. I don't have any, like a lot of obligations. So let me just try to do this on my own. Almost immediately after college, I got a few digital marketing clients, had fun with that for a little bit. But I ran into a situation where all of my clients were still spending so much time in their business, even after I was getting them more, increasing their revenue, getting them more leads, helping them get their own customers. And it was, I mean, just they were doing everything. And I'm like, why are you doing everything if I'm getting you people that you need and you have a team? And that's when I realized they were kind of just doing stuff and there wasn't a real like process, nothing really written out. Things were just assumed and definitely technology adverse. A lot of them very technology adverse. So it started there, just a solution to the clients that I had at the time. And then I had a real knack for it. My mom studies to be like a cloud engineer. My dad fixes computers for a living. So okay. it, it's in your blood. Yeah, so it's in my blood. So it makes total sense. I absolutely love it. I love the geeky side of things. I love the things that people hate to do. Um, <laughs> And, after and I'm a couple sure they years, love you. Oh, absolutely. I'm the first call they have. When anything goes down, they're like, Kadir, what's going on with this? I don't know what's going on. I don't know why. And it could be just so simple to me, but it's a big issue for a lot of people. And I became really an asset to a lot of people, even more so than I already was. And then I did that for a couple of years just for my clients. And I just decided, you know, this is a real gap. And there's a lot of, especially small entrepreneurs or people with really small teams who need the ability to leverage technology and then also put in the right systems and processes so they can really have sustainable businesses without necessarily having to spend a hundred hours a week in definitely their to make it grow. Definitely. It was a couple of things I want to talk about there. I mean, first of all, I think it's important any size company can benefit from having more formalized processes and automating things, right? The whole idea is how can we be more more profitable, more efficient and effective in what we do. And, and automation definitely helps, especially today with how we're finding that there's fewer resources available in the marketplace. So how can we take mm -hmm. some of those roles and automate them makes total sense. That's where we're going with AI and everything, right? Yep, absolutely. And the other thing I wanted to address is just back to, you said people were, were kind of doing everything. And I think it's important that we recognize for those that are listening 
is there's this tendency. I mean, we're all control freaks. Let's face it. We're all control freaks. And when uncertainty and change and all of that hits us in the face as it has, we even more so have the urge to control because it's we're kind of hardwired for it. So it's not easy for us to let go, but that's part of the process, right? We're just kind of like the animal that comes up for me is kind of the ostrich. If you've ever seen little baby ostriches, they just kind of like, they're like running around in the banging into each other. <laughs> if they're not sticking their head in the ground, right? They're, they're running yeah. into each other. So that's kind of the image that comes up for me. So where do you start? So let's say somebody says, yep, I'm at that point. I feel like overloaded, overwhelmed. I'm doing everything or limited in resources. Where does somebody start? Absolutely. The first place people need to start with is actually really getting a good understanding of what they're doing every single day in their business. I really suggest journaling every day and writing out what did you do for that day? What got done of the things that you did? What are the things you shouldn't have been doing? Because that's going to help you identify what are the tasks and what are the positions in your business that you immediately either hire a person or you need to hire technology in order to kind of focus and be able to help you get to where you want to go. We don't want to make it random. We don't want to buy a bunch of software and spend hundreds of dollars per month and you just got it, but you weren't really sure how it works and therefore it's not being used. And therefore you're kind of just wasting money and it just kind of feels good to have some software there and say that you have it, but it's not really being used to help you. Right. Um, we have to first figure out where are we at right now. And then the second part of that is you need to figure out where you really want to go. And I don't even just mean like, you know, you want to make a hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars a year. I mean like how big of a team do you have it in your mind? How many clients do you really want to surface? How big of the company do you really want to get it to be? Because that'll determine a lot in and of itself as well. Like if you want to have a hundred 200 person team and and like you have the dream of a super big company, well, then that'll determine the small things today that'll help you get there without Mm -hmm. having a bunch of transition problems. But maybe you're somebody like me who doesn't want that at all. I tell every person that, that I'm interviewing and I let them know, I don't want a large team. I want like five to seven, seven to 10. I don't really want a large group of people. My org chart, my organizational chart is built out to have like five to 10 very core individuals in there. And then everybody else may be a contractor or something like that. But you want to have your vision clearly understood because again, that'll determine how you get there. Mm -hmm. Because to give an analogy, if you were driving and you wanted to take a road trip and you had a specific place in mind, you first have to figure out what that destination is before you really start driving. And then the second thing is you got to have a route to get there. So if I'm going, I live in Detroit. So if I'm going from Detroit to Chicago, I'm not just going to start driving. I'm going to have a plan. I know the route. I'm going to put it in Google and it's going to tell me where to go and what places to go because I know what my destination is and I know where I'm starting from. So really getting a good idea of where you're starting from is super important. So all of you listening, that first step of awareness is, you know, it is getting those goals clear, understanding where it is that you want to go, what are your objectives? That doesn't matter the size of your business. It doesn't matter if you're smack dab in the middle of a business where you're like middle level manager, you still need to know where's the company going? What are your goals, right? So that you can align what you're doing on a day-to-day with those goals and make sure that you're doing what matters most, what moves the needle. So that's what I hear you saying, right? Is get awareness, identify the gap of where you want to go and where you are today. And then you can devise a fair plan. Oh, absolutely. It's that clarity. I think a lot of people get overwhelmed when I, you know, I'll talk about tech, I'll talk about systems and they kind of just think, well, this is just one more thing upon the thousands of things that I'm doing. And I don't want them to feel like that. This is why they have to start with the clarity, get a good understanding Mm -hmm. of what you're really trying to do. So you know what you're working for. I think another reason a lot of people will just keep doing tasks is because they lose out on what am I really doing this for? Am I am I being productive or am I just doing a bunch of stuff? And I'm still tired from the stuff, but then I don't really feel like I'm moving forward. But if you don't know where you're moving forward towards, then it kind of defeats the purpose of doing all the stuff, if that makes sense. For sure. Basically we get caught up in this trap that urgent crowds out important. So if you want to scale your business, if you want to be more profitable and grow it, no matter whether it's growing the number of people or growing the amount of money that you're making, 
you're never going to get there if all of your time is spent on everything that's urgent because those things that are important that actually move the needle and grow the business are not getting done or not getting the attention and focus. So I'm a big fan of shifting our focus and understanding what's moving the needle and then put our attention there. Absolutely. I'm the same way. Absolutely. Same way. So interesting. One of the questions I ask everybody who's on is what's your definition of productivity and why? My definition of productivity is when you get done, you feel good about what you just got done. Like you have clarity that the things on your list that you checked off, they were able to get done, even if it wasn't everything, but the things that did get accomplished, they moved the needle and you know, it absolutely helped you. And it, the reason I say that is because it goes a little bit kind of piggybacking what you said earlier about people doing a lot of the urgent things and not necessarily the, the important things. And I think when you can feel good and you know this task, no matter how long it took, I know it's going to help me get to the goal I have, then that's more important than anything, in my opinion. In business, in your personal life, if you know me sending this email, me reaching out to this individual, me following up with this lead, me implementing this, this new process for my team, if you know that those are super important about and it helps not just yourself, but other people, it's better than anything. And it doesn't matter if your long list didn't get accomplished. You have so many hours of the day. That's okay. But you do anything that makes you feel like, okay, we're going in the right place. We're running this route. We're going to get to where we need to go because I keep moving forward. And you took that next step. It doesn't have to be a mile. So you're a technology person. So what are your favorite tech tools that help you to be more productive in your business? Yes. So one major tool is having a customer relationship management system, a CRM. My personal one that I use is called Go High Level. It's pretty newer on the market in comparison to like HubSpot or Active Campaign, if people are familiar with that. I absolutely love it because it really takes the place of like Calendly or like Acuity for your calendar booking. I can automate my email marketing without using MailChimp or ConvertKit, SMS marketing as well. And I can have so many things moving in the background without me having to do it. I absolutely love it. And I think everybody really needs a customer relationship management tool, like no matter what you do. You need a database that you can keep your customers and your clients in. You can see your history with everybody. You know where they're at in your sales process. You know where they're at in just them being a client in your business, how long they've been with you. And it's all in one place versus on sticky notes versus on (laughs) posts. in your notebook that you write down, but then you forget to go back and you got the page because you were doing these other things and then everything kind of got lost and then you don't have the notebook anymore, so you bought a new one. You need something online. Absolutely, 100%. You need something online. After that, if you're not using, like if your CRM doesn't allow for automatic emails for whatever reason, or it's just not as good, using an email sender tool like ConvertKit. I really enjoy ConvertKit when I used it. It's really good and it allows for levels of automation in there as well as in automatically sending emails, especially, you know, like on people's birthdays and everything. It's Mm -hmm. one of my favorite email tools. Awesome. Anything else? So that's customer relationship aspect of it. What about something that just helps you to save time? Do you have any like time saver tools? I would say I use Zapier a lot for a Mm, lot of my I love Zapier. Oh my goodness. I could talk all day about Zapier. I got a lot of videos. So tell people about about Zapier, Zapier. just so that they know how this can totally save their day. Save the game. Yes. So Zapier is, you can think of it as the glue of the internet. And I say that because (laughs) it allows you to pass data between totally different apps that don't talk to each other, basically. They're Mm -hmm. totally separate. But Zapier comes in the middle and it'll pass data between those two and they can automatically send emails for you. It can automatically populate data entries in like your Google Sheets. It can automatically trigger events in other apps that again, don't talk to each other. I probably have like 300 something zaps in my account right now. Wow. Um, If not more. I mean, I use it for a ton of stuff. I use it for clients. I use it for sending automatic reports. It it is extremely powerful. And especially if you get into the super geeky side, which is using the API and the webhooks, which I don't want to go, I don't want to confuse anybody. Right. It's very powerful. And for most people to know, like you don't even have to get into the API and the stuff. You just very easy. You just kind of map some fields across or it's very, very 
user friendly in that very context. user friendly. Like Absolutely. just to give people an example. So I run a process, you know, if I'm gonna, let's say I have a conversation with someone and they say they want to hire me. So for an event, so basically they fill out a Google form. That Google form fills in the contract, sends the contract to them for them to sign, sends them my W9, and it takes care of the whole process and that's it. And then it puts the in my calendar the date and blocks it and all that kind of stuff. So anybody who's listening, right, you can really save yourself an assistant. Like it Zapier mm-hmm. is your assistant and can do a lot of those types of things that an assistant might be doing for you. Oh, absolutely. I have a pretty similar setup. Somebody wants to hire our company Mm -hmm. and they fill out the onboarding form. What triggers next is we have a folder created in our Google Drive specific for that client. All of their answers from the form fill out gets put on a Google document. So that way my team can create it. It also triggers new tasks and our Asana, which is a project management tool we use. And it also tags the correct individuals who should be on that project, who should be uh, looking over everything. They're a part of the client fulfillment part of everything. And it also triggers the client's information in my, I have a specific Google sheet with all my client's info. So we just have it in one place and a bunch of other stuff in there. It pretty much takes care of all my onboarding, just as long as somebody fills out that form and it makes yep. the contract, like you said, like it does all that. Right. And that's super powerful. Extremely, extremely. That is probably the number one time savers what I can at least think of right now. I mean, it's, it's incredible what you can do in there. Awesome. Do you have any other little tools like things so like I've got something that I use text expander, for instance, that I can just put a hashtag gig and then like three paragraphs will come up that I normally use when I'm going to talk to somebody about a gig. Do you have any kind of shortcut tools like that? I'm trying to think what's on my, you know, I have so many Google Chrome extensions. I'm trying to think about <laughs> anything there. It's not exactly time saving, but it helps me be more productive overall. Mm -hmm. I have an app called Newsfeed Eradicator, and it's a free Google Chrome extension. And what it'll do is it will block out like my YouTube feed, my Facebook feed, my Instagram feed when I'm on my computer. Okay. Um, Yeah. And I can set it for specific times, I believe. And mm-hmm. it just helps me whenever I get the itch to look up something. Right. Um, and I, you know, I, and I use Facebook for business reasons, but it can be so easy to just see your feed and then you see what's posted. And then now you're like nine posts deep on somebody else's profile, looking at videos mm-hmm. and right. it gets totally distracting. So that's a really good productivity tool that I use. Fantastic. Another one, if I can get one more. Yeah, please. It's called a uh, rescue time. And I like to use it because sometimes you just need to see the numbers for yourself and you need to see what you've been doing. And Rescue Time will track my time on my computer, my phone, and my iPad. And it'll show me on my work hours, it'll show me how productive I really was and how much work I really got done. It gives me the truth because sometimes you'll think you've been doing something for 12 hours straight. Yeah, I put in 12 hours of work and I look at Rescue Time and it'll say, well, closer to six, you know, maybe seven. If you consider all the time you took breaks to look at social media, right? Just the you know, I'm human like everybody else. It does happen. So I love it for the accountability and it helps me know what am I really doing that's actually productive? How long am I really spending time to actually do it? I love it. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing those. I think that people listening always like to hear about new tools or things that, that might help them in different ways to be more productive. Oh, absolutely. So and tell me, what did I on. ask you today that you think is really important that people get from you? One of the things is understanding that it's, it isn't always just about the tech. I love tech. I love helping people install the best technology and choosing the best things that, that are for them. But it's really getting the right teams, in my opinion, that help you in the long run, as in hiring the right people and getting clarity on who you really need to hire to help your business go to the next level. Uh, it's really people over tech to me all the time, as much as I love technology. But if I didn't have the people on my team, life would still just be so much harder. And there's not enough automation in the world, at least right now. I mean, AI might change a lot of things, but, but right now you still need people, any of the right people who can think, who can take initiative, who can help you grow in ways you might not even consider. It. So just for the people listening, I, I, I want you to not just think that tech is the only thing that you need. You do need the right people around you. 
I totally agree that more and more, I believe, even as AI takes over certain roles, it's that much more important that we have the right people on board and people who have critical thinking skills. It's those people who are going to be in charge of how the computer giving it context and having it work and analyzing what comes out of it. And so I believe it's going to be that much more important. Maybe the type of people that you hire might be slightly different, but you're still going to need people and you're going to need them to be able to better understand the work, the customer, right? And all of the inputs so that they can better appreciate how to work with the outputs. Absolutely. 100%. I agree. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Penny, for allowing me to be here. This was fun. I always love conversations like these and I can always geek out about tech. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, I enjoyed it as well. And I hope that you all enjoyed it. Kadir, tell us where people can get a hold of you so that they can find out more about you, maybe hire you to automate something for them. Absolutely. You all can actually find me at succeedingwithsystems.com. Uh, you can see a lot of our, our content there and everything. And you can also find me on social media at Kadira S. Muhammad on my Instagram, on my TikTok, and also on my YouTube channel. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And again, thank you guys for being here. I hope that you got a couple of new systems that you can use some thoughts. If you haven't checked out Zapier yet, definitely go check it out. That can be a huge benefit for you. And I don't care whether you're a solopreneur or again, whether you're working in the midst of an organization, sometimes automating some of the things that can just save us maybe a small amount of time and sometimes even a large amount of time, but it stops all that context switching that we might have as we have to do all of those things. So check out the tools, check out Kadir and what she's got going on. And just consider as you step back and look at your business to create that awareness of where you are today, are you focusing on the things that are most important and where would you have that opportunity to say, okay, these are the most important things. So how are you going to delegate, automate, or eliminate any of the things that aren't in the highest priority area so that you can give yourself the peace of mind of knowing that you're not getting caught up in that urgency trap and crowding out the things that are most important. So thank you guys for being here. My name is Penny Zanker, and this is Take Back Time. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening. Today's topic is another opportunity for you to put the knowledge you learned into practice. Tune in again next week for more strategies that will help you have more energy and focus to get more done in less time so you can continue to take back time.